Amen. This is indeed another day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Aren't you glad this morning? Amen. 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 God allows us to see another beautiful Sunday, Sunday morning. Amen. 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 As our choir approach to come to the choir stand, let us all please stand and go to our responsive reading. Our responsive reading comes from 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter, the 13th through the 16th verse. If we have found that passage of scripture, let the church say praise the Lord. And it reads as follows. Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Beseech you, brethren. Ye know the house of Stephanus. That is, the first fruits of the pair, and, and that they, they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Altogether, that ye submit yourselves unto such, and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. Amen. Our hymn of praise, standing on the promises.
Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Hold on. Let, let's try that again. Good morning, church. Good morning. Hey, look, it's a great day the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. First, second Sunday in the month of July. We're halfway through, right? God has brought us a mighty long way. And today I want you to sit back and just praise God for all he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do, right? We can go everywhere else. Football season coming up, what, 54 days? We're going to be cheering on all corn, right? Basketball season coming up. We're going to be cheering on the Lakers. Let's give the Lord his praise today, okay? All right. We ain't going to rob God. We go to him when we need something. We need to give him something in return, right? What have you done for him lately? That should be the question today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you right now, Father God. Father God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father God, we come to you right now with thanksgiving in our heart. Father God, thank you for all that you've done, you're doing, and that you're going to do in our life, Father God. Thank you for allowing us to assemble and fellowship one more time, Father God. Thank you for allowing us just to give us the limbs, the activity of all our limbs, Father God. Thank you for giving, putting us in our right frame of mind, Father God. And just thank you for getting us here to church safely. And, Lord, we know that you're going to get us home safely. Lord, we come to you right now. We ask that you would bless the sick and shut in, Father God. Father God, bless the sick and shut in that they may get back to church and give a testimony of how you turned their life around, Father God. Father God, bless the homeless, Father God. Bless those who are going through mental things right now, Father God. Bless this. Uh, Bless the mothers, Father God. Father God, bless our students as they get prepared to return back to school, Father God. And Father God, continue to bless our church family, Father God. Father God, let them know it's safe to return back to church, Father God. Father God, we've gone so long during COVID, Father God, and you brought us closer. But Lord, please let them return back to our fellowship. Father God, we want to thank you just for your grace, your mercy, your favor, Father God. Just thank you for whose you are and whose you are, Father God. Father God, we ask that you continue to bless our pastor and his family, Father God. We ask that you bless the pastor's anniversary that is coming up, Father God. Father God, we ask that you bless our new deacons that were just ordained last Sunday, Father God. Father God, lead and guide them in the right direction, Father God, that they may serve you and serve the church, Father God. Father God, continue to bless our trustees, our deaconess. Father God, our ushers, our musicians, our choir members, Father God, and everybody that's on the sound of my voice or maybe logged in on live, Father God. Father God, we thank you just for being with us, Father God, bringing us through tough times, Father God. Father God, I personally just want to thank you for, for doing what you've done in my life, Father God. I want to thank you. I want to be a testimony to let people know that you did it for an old country boy like me. You would do it for them, Father God. Father God, continue to guide, strengthen us, Father God. Bless our kids as they go off to college, Father God. Strengthen them. Get them the tools to be successful. Not only be successful, but come back and give back, Father God. Father God, we love you, Father God. And we thank you. We need you, Father God. We need you every second, every minute, every hour, every day, Father God. We can't make it without you. Continue to strengthen us as we go through this journey called life, Father God. Continue to let us be there for one another, Father God. And we'll continue to give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor, Father God. We ask these blessings and all blessings in your son, Jesus Christ's name, where all prayers are truly answered. Amen. 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 Good morning, Black Chapel. Good morning. I say good morning, Black Chapel. Good morning. Yes, indeed. We give God the glory this morning. We give Him all the praise because we know it was nothing that we did of our own, but it was all because of Him. And y'all join us this morning as we sing unto the Lord. Ha! Huh. I've come to receive, to receive a patiently waiting for the harvest. I've got the Hebrews 11. 
Amen. Before we go any further, tell your neighbor next to you and say, I'm glad to see you today. Show them some love. Say, I'm glad to see you. Amen. Amen. Let's loosen up this morning. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. All right. How many of you know that you have a blessing with your name on it? You've already been blessed, but you know you got some more coming. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> Amen. God bless you, Mel Choir. Now that we come to the portion where we acknowledge our visitors, those who are visiting us for the first time, it may not be your first time, but we still want to greet you and acknowledge you in the name of our Lord. Will all of our visitors please stand? Amen. 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 They're like we're at home, but we're still going to welcome our, our visitors viewing by way of live stream. I love you with the love of the Lord. Whether you are in the sanctuary or by viewing us by live stream on Facebook, we welcome you in the name of our Lord to our Sunday morning worship service. Our pastor will be on later on to greet you on his own. But we pray here at Black Chapel that something is said and some, but most of all, something that, that will be preached will be a strength to your walk this week. May God bless you. May God keep you. See you next Sunday, and we turn you over to our announcer, Sister Love. Good morning again, Black's Chapel. Good morning. Our announcements are as follows. Mount Sinai MB Church, located at 2280 West Harrison Street, Harper Street in Richland, invites you to worship with them at their Women's Fellowship on Saturday, July 15th at 5 p.m. Our very own evangelist, Tammy Cole, will be the speaker for the occasion. General, Mission, General Missionary Baptist Convention will be on July 17th through the 20th at Greater Pearly Grove. They have five choirs if you're interested in joining them. The women rehearsal will be on July 5th at 4 at K Chapel. The adult rehearsal will be on July 14th at 10 a.m. at Greater Fairview. If you're interested in attending any of the classes or services and other convention activities, please see Dr. Lucille Brown. Church Women United Jackson Unit is hosting our, the Claire Collins Awards Luncheon on Saturday, July 22nd at 1130, Central United Methodist Church Family Life Center on Ferris Street. The speaker will be Attorney Monique Montgomery. If you're interested in attending, please see Dr. Lucille Brown for that as well. Our upcoming events, our pastor's anniversary is July 16th, and Sister Terry Bennett will come later to expound on that. The election day is August 8th. Men and Women Day is August 20th, 2023. Our birthday is for the week. On the 11th, we have Malia Lacey and Nicole Ross. On the 12th, yours truly, Veranda Love. On the 13th, we have Michael Shorter. Happy birthday, members. Happy birthday. His mother turned 67.
happy birthday members. We also have anniversaries this week. On the 11th, we have Reverend James and Evangelist Tammy Cole, and also Mother Curry and Brother Turner Curry's anniversaries on the same day, the 11th. Our prayer list, we have Deacon Daniel Bennett, Baptist Hospital. We have Sister Ja'Cory Love, Sister Dorcas Thigpen, hospitalization of her sister Rachel Curry, Sister Janice Cavett, Sister Mary Cooper, mother of Deacon Dennis Williams. Amen. We have Deacon Charles Bell, Tyler Pfizer, nephew of Mother Wyndham, and Deacon Melvin Pfizer. We have Brother Turner Curry, Joshua Henderson, and Sister Jessie Bell Williams, mother of Deacon Curtis Watson. Amen. And also let's be in prayer for our bereaved family, Sister Faye Robinson and family, and the demise of her brother, Douglas Charles Gardner and any other members that we are unaware of, please be in prayer for them. Thank you and have a great week, Sister Bennett. Good morning again. Good morning, Pastor McNeil and Reverend Handy, members, visitors, and friends. This is a friendly reminder about the pastor's 33rd year anniversary. Next Sunday, July the 16th at 10.30 a.m. We're asking each member for a donation of $50 or more. And gifts are welcome. Now, if you want to pay more, you can. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> if personal checks are written, please make them payable to Pastor McNeil because the gift is for him, him and the First Lady, I'm sorry. A special envelope has been made for the pastor's anniversary, and um, I will give these to the deacons, and so once you come around, please pick one of these envelopes up. Also, when we're talking about giving, you know, to the pastor for his um, anniversary, read First Timothy, 5 and 18. It says, for the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it's trends out of the grain and the labor is worthy of his wages. Thank you. And Reverend McNeil, if I'm out of order, please tell me <laughs> So about what I'm about to state. Um, Remember, everybody in here, and I'm sure if you have not called on the pastor before, I promise you, you will get a chance to call him. And I know for a fact, I have called on him three times, and then I also called him in the midnight hour. He never told me, Terry, it's too late. Terry... It's a charge, never. So remember again, on next Sunday, let's shower him with love. Thank you.
I better let it go and give it to God. I learned a long time ago, I tried to do it myself. It didn't work. But one day my mom told me, put it in God's hands. And after I done that, He worked it out. Amen. All in his hand. Amen. Come on, Brother King. Before I tie an offering.
Good morning, good morning, Black Chapel. It's tithe and offering time. This opportunity in the service for us to give back just a little bit of what the Lord has given unto us on this day. 10%. Here at Black Chapel, we have multiple ways to give. You can give online through our Give Fly account at any time. Or you can come by any day of the week and drop off at the, in our drop box on the west end of the church. Or you can give right here in service today. So at this time, we're going to turn everything over to our ushers uh, for the offering. And I also want to remind everyone that we do have uh, envelopes for the uh, pastor's anniversary, so feel free to pick one up on your way around. Please stand. Let us go to God in prayer. God, our Father in heaven, first of all, <laughs> we just come to say thank you. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that the earth, that everything that dwells therein belongs to you. And that no matter what situation we are dealing with, 
we know once we place it in your hands, you will take care of it. We thank you for that fact. It's not just a theory. It's not something that we heard, but it's something that we know. You have proven it to us time and time again. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on Calvary, that we may have the right to the tree of life. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for everyone who come out on this morning, Heavenly Father, either in the sanctuary or by via live stream. We thank you for them. Thank you for our pastor and his family, Heavenly Father. On next Sunday, we will be celebrating another anniversary. Continue to bless him, first, his first, the first lady and his family. Bless his offering. Bless the ones who give. Bless the ones who wanted to give but had not. Bless them today we'll be able to give next time. Multiply and divide in a way will be used for the building of your kingdom. Lift up those who may be going through sickness right now. Those who are in the hospital or those who may be at home recovering. Those who are in nursing homes. Those who are in mental institutions. Those who are in homeless shelters. Those who are just on the streets. Those who are incarcerated. We remember them right now. So you said true religion are those those who look after the widows, the orphans. We remember them right now. Where's well, all the blessings? In your son Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 All things. Praise the Lord, everyone. This last selection that we're going to sing, telling you about how we love the Lord. And if you're sitting out there, you're looking up here at us, men, we're not just up here just to be up here singing. We have what you call, you don't know the story behind our praise and our praise and our worship. It is for real. We, we're not ashamed to say that we love the Lord because he first loved us. He has given us a pastor. That's after his own heart. And we're going to pray for him. We're going to dedicate this to him. We're going to dedicate this also to Brother Bennett, Danny Bennett, who's at home recuperating. Brother Bell, one of our other deacons as well. And those of you that are sitting out there. This is a personal testimony. And only you can take this lightly. So don't just sit here and just listen to us, but just let us worship and fellowship this God that we talk about that we really love. If you love him, don't be ashamed to love him. Does that not make sense? Those of you that are viewing at home, if you love the Lord, love him to the best that you can because he tells us to love him with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our might. And then right behind that, he tells us to love our neighbor as we would ourselves. So that's all we're simply saying in this song, that we love him and we love him dearly. So if you love him and you love him dearly, just let go and just let God have his way. Worship to him in your own personal way. You reign 
my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I live my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God.
Conversation that Jesus had with Peter. When Jesus asked Peter three times, Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And after that third time, Peter responded in saying, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. You know. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then Jesus responded to that response of Peter in saying that if you love me, then keep my commandments. If you love me, 
than feed my sheep. If you love me, then feed my lamb. If you love me, Peter, then feed all of my sheep. Love is that voluntary choice which seek after the highest good of that object that which is loved. First John tells us that God is love. And we know that God so loved the world until he gave his only begotten son in that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And in doing such, it was not God's will that any should perish, but that all shall be saved. Love is an emotion which is full of action. Action. There is an active love and there is an inactive love whole lot of things that we do in the name of love we should not do. Well, the only reason why I'm doing this is because I love you. If that is a reason that should not be done, that is not an act of love that's being committed. Sometimes there are things when, times when we get so emotionally involved so emotionally out of control. And we act in such a way and we identify that way as being an act of love. When love performs any work other than the work of that which is good and beneficial, toward the person in which you love then that is not an act of love that's being committed that is a time when love should be inactive inactive love is one of the most powerful forces upon the face of the earth it has the power to motivate and encourage us to do the things that we should do and stop us from doing the things that we should not do. It is twofold. It activates us and it diffuses us. Because us can be something else. Us can be something else. I loved you, Jesus. I loved you more than anything. Stay that way. And Jesus also asked another question. How can you say that you love me? A God in whom you've never seen and yet hate your brother. One in whom you see daily. What an opportunity our God has blessed us with by equipping us with the ability and the capability of loving. What greater love 
is there than one to surrender oneself for that of another. Love is not selfish. Love is always outgoing. It is something that God has blessed us with to give out. To give out freely. At no charge. No one should have to do anything for you. In order for you to love. Because we, we owe that unto our faith. We owe that unto our salvation to be creatures and beings of love. What an opportunity God has blessed us with. Let us give this great mayor, of course, another round of applause. But once again, they have blessed our hearts through song. And I truly believe that those are more than just words or lyrics that's being sang. I believe that they have a heart and a love for God. Just by them being where they are right now. And that is in the choir log, making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serving the Lord with gladness. And coming before his presence with singing. That is one of the evidence of love for God. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of 1 Peter. The fifth chapter. the seventh and the eighth verse. <clears throat> First Peter. <clears throat> the fifth chapter. The seventh and the eighth And there we will find these words. Casting all your care upon him. For he cares for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Let us think on this thought. I want to talk about the facts of life. The facts of life. And that is what Peter is talking about. In these two passages of scripture. Casting all your care upon him. For he cares for you.
You know, when we were children coming up and we reached a certain age, our parents or some elder would pull us to the side and go over with us some of the facts of life. The do's and the don'ts. That will lead you to one end or that of another. The do's would lead you to a happy, blessed place. And the don'ts would lead you into chaos. The facts of life. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The facts of life. We find in our scripture reading this morning Well, the Apostle Peter is giving out some instructions unto the elders and the congregation, which was located down in the Asia Minor. And these instructions that Peter were given out were not instructions for a quick fix. Those instructions were not instructions for a quick fix. Peter was not telling them that when you leave church this morning, when you leave church this morning, to be observant of your surroundings and of the path in which you take while on your way home. Peter was not telling them that once you get home from church to fix yourselves a pot of dark coffee and drink all of it and so for yourselves up. But rather, Peter was telling them to be Be. The scriptures tells us that Peter was telling the elders and the congregation down in the Asia Minor to be sober and to be vigilant. And be means to possess. To maintain and to sustain. Peter was telling them that you have to possess, maintain, and sustain the state of soberness. You have to 
possess, maintain, and sustain the state of vigilant. Why? Because there is a spectator who is out there monitoring your every move, your every act, and your every action. And Black Chopper, I'm telling you this morning that there is a spectator out there who is monitoring your every move, your every act, and your every action. And the Apostle Peter, the Apostle John, the Apostle Paul, and Moses shines the light of truth upon the character traits of that spectator. Let me say that again. The Apostle Peter, the Apostle John, the Apostle Paul, and Moses shines the light of truth upon the character traits of that spectator who is monitoring your every move, your every act, and your every action. And Peter tells us that the devil is, is, is like a roaring lion. That spectator is likened to that of a roaring lion who is traveling to and fro throughout the earth, seeking whom he may devour. And the apostle John tells us that he is, the devil is out there to steal from us, to kill us, and to destroy us. And the apostle Paul tells us that the devil is able to transform himself to appear even as an angel of light. And Moses tells us that the devil is the most keen and the most cunning beast in the field. And he is monitoring our every move, our every act, and our every action. And that is why Matthew tells us to beware of false prophets who cometh unto you dressed in sheep clothing because in Wartley he's just like a raven wolf. And the majority of us Christians don't know the difference between a wolf and a raven wolf. To us, a wolf is just a wolf. And that a wolf is a large, hairy creature who lives out in the woods, who have red eyes and long fangs and claws that can rip you to threads. Well, let me tell you something, Black Chapel. That is the good wolf. That is the good wolf. And the reason why that is a good wolf, because that wolf is detectable. You can hear that wolf coming from miles away as he forces his way through the brush, howling along the way. And before he launches attack upon you, he always gives out a growl, which gives you ample time to prepare yourself to defend yourself against that wolf. But that raven wolf, that raven wolf, which is dressed in sheep clothing, he looked just like you. He walked just like you. He talked just like you. And he acts just like you. And as soon as you close your eyes and turn your back, he's going to butcher you into the lamb chop. Since the devil is so active and innovative, that suggests that all of us who are in this sanctuary and all of us who are part of our viewing and listening order are being challenged by some form of the devil. Each and every one of us are being challenged 
right now. By some form of the devil. And the devil is anybody or anything that deliberately set out to separate you from your inheritance. That deliberately set out to separate you from the quality of life that God will you to have. Anybody or anything. Purposely set out to separate you from your inheritance. Or to separate you from the quality of life that your God will for you to have. The devil often attacks us from the areas where we are least expecting him to. He attacks us from our spiritual front. He normally attacks us from the area or from the direction in which we least expect him to. He, he attacks us from our spiritual front. And we are spiritual beings that are wrapped with flesh. And all flesh is sinful. Which suggests that there are two different forms of devils that we are contending against. There are two different forms of devils that we have to deal with. There is an internal devil and there's an external devil. And that's what Paul meant when Paul told the church down in Rome. Every time when Paul told the church down in Rome, he said, he said every time I set out to do good, he said, he said, he said the time, he said, the evil that I would, I do not. And, the, and the, 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 the good that I would, I do not. And the evil that I would not, that I do. Every time I set out to do good, Evil is always present. Oh, wretched man am I. Who shall save me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ. For with the mind I serve the law of God. And with the flesh I serve the law of sin. There are two demons. There are two devils that we have to deal with. One is an eternal devil. And the other is an external devil. But both devils share the same objectives. Same purpose. Two different forms of devils. One is an internal devil. The internal devil. And the other is the external devil. But both of them share the same objective. And those objectives are to manipulate your mind. To change your priorities. And to reroute your spiritual contribution. And that is why Paul told the church down in Rome. To let this mind be in you. Which was also found in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you. Which was also found in Christ Jesus. You see Black Chapel. Our mind is the arena where the war between good and evil, right and wrong, victory and defeat are being fought. You see, sin first began as a thought. It is first thought upon. And then it becomes a vision where it is visualized. And if the thought of that vision and the vision of that sin is not brought into captivity, it penetrates into the flesh. And the flesh mechanically acts out the mental suggestion of the thought of the vision and the vision of that sin. But let me tell you something. That is why the devil, he's out to manipulate your mind, change your priorities, and reroute your spiritual contribution. And if you're not mighty careful, if you're not mighty mindful, if you're not mighty careful, if you're not mighty prayerful, you will find yourself very quietly and very cautiously Carriage and ca casually dismissing yourself from the works, the duties, the activities, and the programs that you used to participate in and own in the church. 
And now you have become a used to be. I used to sing in the choir. I used to usher on the usher board. I used to come to Sunday school. I used to pay my tithes and my offering. I used to be an officer in the church. I used to attend worship service. Now you have become a used to be. You've been transformed from an active Christian into an inactive Christian. And an inactive Christian is a used to be. A used to be. And I wonder this morning, Black Chapel, how many used to be's we have out there in the world today who have allowed the devil to manipulate your mind, change your priorities, and reroute your spirits of contribution. Well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You don't have to continue to participate in that awful state of being. You don't have to continue to swim with the current. You can cast all of your cares upon him because he cares about you. You can cast all of your cares upon him because he cares about you. You see, our faith does not teach us that we are not to suffer, that we are not to sorrow, and that we are not to be burdened down at times. But our faith does teach us that we are not to suffer, we are not to sorrow, and we are not to be burdened down with our hope. And our hope is found in that little ray of light, which is known as Jesus, who constantly travels around the rims and ridges of our darkness and despair, who always has within his capacity the ability to break into our situation and set us free. Set us free. And when God sets you free, when God sets you free, you are free indeed. Free indeed. And I come by here this morning, Black Chapel, to let all of the used to be's know, let all the used to be's know that that God still has some let it be's left. Let it be's left. Because when God speaks, creation takes place. Creation takes place. Creation takes place. He's out to rob you of all the benefits, of all the blessings, of all the treasures, of all the rewards, of all the gifts that God has stored up for you in earth and in heaven. Still kill and destroy. Those are the facts of our lives. Two-way street. And you got to go one of those ways. Every day of our lives, every step we take defines one of those ways. Every word we speak, every act we commit defines which way. out but to steal from you, to kill you, and to destroy you. And he is able to transform himself, to appear, even nothing lies beyond his transforming ability, even to appear as an angel of light. He is the most keenest and the most cunningest beast in the field. And he's twofold. He's twofold. He's internal and he's external. And he's constantly monitoring, watching and observing. The way in which we're going to go. And every step that we make Every word that we speak, every act that we, every action that we take, every thought that we allow to manifest and linger around in our mind and in our hearts, 
it is not the devil who tempts us. It is we who tempts the devil. By beckoning his skills with opportunity. It is not he who tempts us. But it is we who tempts him. By beckoning his skills with opportunity. Let this mind be in you. Which is also found in Christ Jesus. Because our mind is the arena where the war begins. Where the victory is won or lost. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. What an awesome God, we serve. Cast all of your cares upon him because he cares for us. As Solomon would say, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not toward your own understanding. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares about us. We don't have to figure this thing out. It is not for us to even attempt to do. Because Moses has already told us that he is the most keen and the most cunning beast in the field. We can't outthink him. The traps that he has laid out and put in place, the potholes, the mountains, the valleys, the darkness. We cannot evade his skill by way of our own knowledge and by way of our own determination. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not toward your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy path. God is already in place. All the facts that has been tested and proven over and over and over again that they are authentic and that they are omnipotent. Because all God has to do is say, let it be. When our ways are pleasing to God, he will make even our enemies to be at peace. All we have to do is come to know the ways of God and stick to them. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. I say unto our viewing audience, if something has been said or done throughout the activity of our worship service this morning that has touched you in a way where you have that blessed assurance that God wants you to move. To move in his direction. Whether it be here to Black's Chapel or to some other ministry whose doors are open in the name of Jesus. Amen. Move. If something has been said or done throughout the activity of our worship service where the Lord God is impressing on your heart and your spirit to come and unite with the Black's Chapel family, then all you have to do is just key into our comment section or inbox it. Your name, your telephone number, and the word virtual memory. And I will personally contact you. And we will process your situation. We thank God. For all of you who lent your ears. And shared with us in our worship service. May the Lord continue to bless. And may the Lord continue to keep. 
each and every one of us. We thank God this morning for our visitors who came out to share with the Black Shepherd family. We thank God for our own. What an awesome God that we share with one another. And you know, one of the most highlighted, the most highlighted and blessed, blessed times of the week for me is Sunday morning. When the Lord would have allowed the hands on the clock to turn so many times else worship time is up. It is once again time to come into the house of the Lord and worship him in spirit and in truth and to be in the company of you the saints of God. These are privileges that God grants us. Because so many things can intervene between Sunday and Sunday that will block or disallow you opportunity. Time is on hand. Time is on target. But the opportunity is not let us not waste opportunities. If the Lord has blessed you with time and with opportunity, how can we say no unto the Lord? How can we take that time and cast aside that opportunity and use it to do our own thing? Time an opportunity that God has blessed us with and we take that time that God has already divinely assigned a work or to put in place an opportunity and you take that time and you take that opportunity And use it the way you choose to. Two paths. Two beasts. Internal and external. Who are monitoring our every move, our every act, and our every action. And he knows when it is his turn with you. He knows when it's his turn. And he is not going to waste any time nor an opportunity to take all he can from you when it is his turn. When a man's ways are pleasing unto God, he will make even his enemy to bear ground. Let him or her <laughs> And when God say seek, it takes precedence. We're getting ready to go. May the Lord continue to bless and forever keep each and every one of you. Let us not forget our bereaved family. You know, the deaf angel has truly been passing through. But life is temporary. Seasonable. Everything that God put in place for us besides salvation is temporary. Everything in earth that God placed here just for our son, all of it, including us, are temporary. 
because he knows whether we accept it. He knows that this is our, not our place of stay. We are only pilgrims passing through this land. And I thank God that he took away from us the work of choosing when that time comes around. One of the greatest blessings that God could have blessed us with is for him to hold the power of life and death on his tongue. Amen. And when he speaks, we live. When he speaks, we die. God has figured it all out. And all we have to do is continue his way. If there's nothing more, our closing song and benediction. Let us please stand. Let us not forget the greatest tree of life is celebrated Pastor F.L. Blunt's 43rd year anniversary today at 2 o'clock. <clears throat> and those of you who can, please, ma'am, please, sir, come and show your love for my pastor, Pastor Blunt, and the Greater Tree of Life Deliverance Missionary Baptist Church family. 2 o'clock. Our closing song. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide from henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say together. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You are the God bless you. Thank you.